This video is going to be a film study look at Justin Matabike, really taking a look at a number of his plays from 2023. I just did one two and a half weeks ago. I hope I have to do one repeatedly throughout the season because that means he's just continuing on his historic pace. When I say historic, I'm talking about for a Ravens defensive tackle. And we've had some great ones. There's a there's a really good one playing on the other side of Justin Matabike and, and Michael Pierce. I think he has given pretty much every team the the Justin Matabike treatment early in 2023. What I mean by that is his combination of explosiveness, explosiveness getting off the ball quickly, sheer raw power, along with really solid technique on a variety of moves. Not only does he have six and a half sacks, which is a career high through eight games, he's got two others, I believe, that don't count as a result of penalties on other teammates, which is shocking. He could have eight and a half sacks, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. He's got 13 other quarterback hits. Just a menace for offensive linemen and quarterbacks, whether it's against the run or the pass. I think he's been dominant against both at times. Has, a half, has at least a half a sack in six different games, including a forced fumble against the Lions last week in week seven. Officially, he's only credited with one sack against the Cardinals because his first sack doesn't count because of a really, I think, poor play, poor penalty called on Kyle Hamilton by the refs. That one was negated, man. He just played brilliant again on Sunday. We are really blessed to have this guy for at least one more year. I hope we can keep him. Let's get to some of the film. This is going to be this is going to be that first possession sack. Third and four. He's here. We'll go back and look at Kyle Hamilton's penalty. Other people have posted it on Twitter. I mean, not really much he can do. For Matabike, for me, it's it's sometimes it's the second and the third effort. He's incredibly strong. He's not going to overwhelm every single offensive lineman he deals with, but he has a, I think a great awareness of where he is and in relation to the quarterback. And he's a wrecking ball. You can see he just knocks people over, uh, finishes plays violently. There is a real nastiness to his game. This is him in the three, in a wide three and a rush three. Hamilton's going to go over. I think you catch Hamilton a little bit on the right side of the screen here. I have no idea what Hamilton's supposed to do if he wants to actually uh, defend someone who's clearly running directly into him. You lose him a little bit. But here's Matabike, I think, clearly being held as well. An attempt at a hold by the, by the right guard, at least. No call on that one, which would have been the right thing to do from a referee standpoint in offsetting penalties. At least let us play the next down if you're going to force us to stop him twice. This is a run stop from a three technique. This is what he's been doing. Since 2021, I remember vividly doing a video about him after, I think, week eight or nine in 2021. Unbelievable performance at home against the Vikings from a three-technique position when they did not down block him or combo him with the play side tackle. It was impossible for them to get anything done. Now, here it's the play side tackle dealing with him. You'll get the end zone in a moment. I love how he frames people up, and he's folding back inside to make this play. He can basically two gap from a one gap responsibility it's not necessarily what's happened here actually my my old school coach would be mad that he doesn't get hands on the uh on on the guard but he's really in like a four eye if you ask me and you'll see that by the way he steps out when i say a variety of moves i'm talking about the techniques that he's asked to use you can see hand placement on the inside able to extend and lock out on the tackle fold back inside with pierce for a tackle on i think a two-yard gain just plays through contact brilliantly I have no idea how weight room strong he is. I'm sure it's fantastic, but he's definitely in game strong. There's some people who are weight room strong that are not, you know, real, real bulky guys and, and aren't explosive on the football field. He looks like a guy who's probably both, is my guess. Here's going to be a quarterback hit on a big completion to Michael Wilson. This is in the fourth quarter when Arizona scored on us uh, three times. He's able to rip off again. I think there's an attempt at a hold by the, um, I think it's the right guard. Matty BK plays through it. When I say he plays through contact, I think there's some times where things are not called a hold because Matty BK is able to shed. This is him. You're going to see him rip with the inside arm, rip up violently as he can. And to me, there's an attempt at a hold, but it's not called nonetheless. Big gain for Michael Wilson gets him down. I think they would score on the fourth down here after this play. This is a, a third down sack, I think. A second down sack, excuse me. This is the spin move that everybody's talking about in our Discord. It's ridiculous. 
He's not normal. He's not normal. The, the, the ability to play against the run and do this against the pass. There's, there's many talented defensive tackles in the league. I don't think there's very many that are playing at a higher level than Matt Abike is right now. You can see him spinning and then using this hand to try to pull in this direction, use that momentum to clear that offensive lineman, finish the playoff, I'll give the end zone angle. I don't know who he's pointing to over on the sideline. Got no idea. Uh, He's a scary dude for offensive linemen to deal with. I'm, you know, Those are big, powerful men up there as well. But Justin Matabike brings a level of violence along with the explosiveness and the technique that I think is very unique. I have no idea what he's going to sign for in the offseason. I damn sure hope it's with the Baltimore Ravens. He's been doing this to everybody. When I say this, I mean making explosive plays. This is a forced fumble sack early against the Lions. I think his – his ability to move quickly just shocks people early on. It's a forced fumble that that Sewell um, picks up. Matabike and Owe are celebrating, didn't realize the play was still going on. Did you foresee this? I didn't foresee this. Six and a half sacks through eight games. I was always a guy doing Justin Matabike videos who thought he was playing far better than people gave him credit for, even though there weren't, there weren't eight or ten sacks available as a stat line to support what I was saying. I think he had five and a half last year. Like I said, at times 2021 was brilliant when he got a lot of snaps. This is a QB hit on an uh, intentional grounding against Goff, who really kind of gets away with those things sometimes. He did it Monday night. Again, uh, the referees explained it, that it was it was legitimate. It was a good no call by the refs. What I like about this from a Matabike standpoint is he does not care about the screen. He is going to go and make contact with the quarterback. Potentially, that could have been a penalty in this day and age. I think they called it on Goff and didn't call it on Matabike. My suspicion is because it was an intentional grounding. I love his tenacity. I certainly don't want to see him get all the penalties that he got in week one against the Texans. This was not one of them. This is, along with the explosiveness and the technique that you've seen and the tenacity and violence, the pure speed here is the most impressive thing. Additionally, there is recognition in the middle of the play that kind of sets him up to be able to track down C.J. Stroud. What I'm talking about is it's a run concept look to this side. Matabike either to this side of the O-lineman's helmet or once he ends up on the backside, I think he's already recognized it. And I think that's pretty quick play recognition from him in seeing that the ball wasn't handed off. Imagine you're C.J. Stroud, and you've probably been athletic enough to outrun a number of D tackles in your high school and college career. And in your first game in the NFL, you have a humongous, nasty human being track you down like before you get to the bottom of the numbers. I don't know how often that happened to him, even playing – uh, the high level that he played against, but an amazing play, if you ask me. Rush against the Titans. This is from a five technique. Like, this isn't talked about enough. This dude has lined up as a five technique. I think I have it three times this year and given us good pass rushes. This one, he collapses the left tackle, basically frames him up to the inside and drops him back in the quarterback's lat. Gets a sack that I believe counted, but there's one in this Tennessee game that I think did not count. I believe it might be this one, but I could be wrong. Maybe it was credited to someone else. He's here. Queen is running that stunt where he's trying to pick for Matabike, and then Queen realizes he's got a direct path. Let me just go ahead and take it. But on the play, Matabike just annihilates the running back who's – Tajay Spears, unfortunately for him, he's a really talented kid, first of all. But unfortunately for him, he's dealing with someone that uh, you probably didn't see a whole lot of at Tulane or, or any college, for that matter. Justin Matabike is having an amazing season. Maybe that, maybe that sack was credited to Queen. Last one, he just creates train wrecks. This is going to be on Malik Willis late in that Week 6 game. I did a film study video on this week. Kind of feel guilty showing these play again, but it's, it's fun for me to watch. It's a stunt where Clowney is designed rushing to the inside. Matabike is going to fold over to the outside. He probably would have gotten there earlier. This guy appears to be holding to me, but they didn't call it. Ends up sacking Malik Willis. I think it's another example of they don't call it sometimes when Matabike is involved because he's so quick to get away from it. It's like you hold him, and it doesn't matter. He just gets off of it. There's just an unbelievable level of athleticism and explosiveness from this dude. I hope we re-sign him. 
I wish we had re-signed him before this year. I think I was calling for us to re-sign him at, before the 2022 season because of how well he played in some of the games where he got 30, 35 snaps. Of course, we had, you know, we had Calais Campbell. We had other guys around at that time. We didn't need Matabike to be this 40, 42 snap per game guy. I think that, to be honest with you, he needs to play less snaps at times because it's a long season. It's 17 games. We have depth. Travis Jones – of Roderick Washington, who they did resign, which is interesting to me. I don't know a whole lot about that contract, and I do think Roderick Washington is a really good football player. I don't think he has the, the level of upside and dominant run stop or profile that Justin Matabike has because I just haven't seen it on film in the same manner. It doesn't mean that it won't happen for Broderick Washington at some point. For me, I would have advocated for, and I did, advocate for signing Justin Matabike as opposed to Washington, because now the price is, is only going to go up with each passing week. Man, this is an amazing football player having a historic season, if you ask me. If you double his sack output, and he's got 13 sacks, you know someone's going to give him a heck of a lot of money when they see the technique in the film. My guess is it'll be a team that he plays against currently. It'll be someone who he's played against currently who their offensive line coach goes to the head coach or the GM, and says, hey, look, that guy right there is a guy that we cannot block. It doesn't matter what the concept is, run, pass, play, whatever. You guys let me know what you think of the video. Another film study look at Justin Matabike and how well he's playing in 2023. I think it's deserved, and I hope I have to do three or four more of them before the regular season ends. Get, appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content, this film study look at Justin Matabike in week eight and a larger um, extrapolation of film from all over 2023, then please consider grabbing a link to this, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.